YouTube. Well, I wanted to show you all this 2011 Chevrolet Camaro SS with 16,000 miles. Um, this one has the six-speed manual, and I believe it's the one SS trim level. In other words, it's the basic version with the V8 engine. Introduced in 2010, it really brought head-turning looks. I mean, the car is just absolutely badass, and it's just amazing how popular these cars are. With that 426 horsepower, 6.2 liter V8, it really pushed forward to introduce higher performance engines in the 2011 model Mustang. The back end just is sexy. Now notice those tail lights, the design language to uh, the back end of this car is trickling down to other GM models such as the Chevy Impala and Malibu. This truly is a sexy looking car. Um, it rides on, the tires are of different sizes. Uh, the back is 275 40 20s and the front utilizes 245 45 20s. So you get my drift here with uh, different tire sizes. But look inside, very retro looking and check out the yummy six speed manual right over there. The cloth upholstery with the white stitching over here. See it is powered, backrest and the door panel plasticky finish on top. At least this side here, this portion is padded. Power windows both have auto up and down functions, power mirrors, the dislodge the trunk and the door pocket. Uh, sharp edges over here, the choice of plastics on this door panel and throughout this interior. You can see very chitsy, brittle. Check out the key, unlock, lock, dislodge the trunk and panic. The key flips open like so. Beautiful sounds. While the Camaro has a sexy exterior, the interior is a little bit disappointing. While it does have these cool retro looks, um, the choice of materials throughout the interior really isn't that good. Now check out the dashboard, this grainy plastic. You can see it pushes inward, it's very hollow. But anyways, um, in terms of comfort, these seats are very comfortable. They're so cozy, hugs your back, lower section, very cushiony, lots of leg room, and pretty wide. But one of the things that most disappoint me with this car is uh, the proportions within this cabin. Um, you just feel so tiny in here, and I'm 6'1". I have this seat adjusted to where I prefer, and I feel like I'm sitting inside a pit. And to the top of my shoulder is right there. I mean, barely even with the top of the door panel. And uh, you know, you're just barely looking over the hood. I'm not saying that it's impossible to drive it and that visibility is so poor, but if you're a very short person, this really wouldn't be the most easy car to handle. Um, rear view visibility isn't too great as well. You can see the rear glass is more of a slit. I mean, it's not that large at all. Glove box, pretty large. It's just, you can fit the biggest of objects in there. It shuts evenly. Now the head unit over here, the radio. Insert your discs right there. Climate control, the door locks and hazards. Power outlet, and stability control, traction control, button, with a shifter, the six-speed manual. All the gears go in pretty easy. The rest of the center console over here, this grainy plasticky finish, not good at all. Cup holders, aux jack, and USB. Another power outlet in there. Armrest is cushiony on top, at least. The e-brake really does feel cheap in your hand. It feels so hollow, like you're grabbing like a metal rod. I think it should have been bolstered and leather wrapped, I, just like the shifter over here. Steering wheel's nicely thick, it's side bolsterings, leather wrapped, has its hands-free controls. I forgot mentioning this car does have Bluetooth, volume controls to the radio, and cruise. I'm not digging this glossy silver paint finish over here. Um, this generally wears out over time and becomes so ugly. The Intermate Speed Wipers up there, Cruise Control, and the menu. You can see all the vehicle info, such as uh, tire pressure, just about everything you want to see, even average MPGs, distance to empty. Panel dim functions, headlamps, has automatic headlamps. The steering wheel does tilt and telescope. Just a slatch right there. The sun visors are hunks of plastic, basically. It only has a mirror, no vanity light. It's possible that a higher trim level, you can get a mirror and vanity light. Same deal on the driver's side, only a mirror. The rear view mirror does have OnStar as every GM vehicle. The map lights right there. Passenger airbag on off indicator. So once a body sits inside the passenger seat, the airbag will activate. Check out this trunk. 
access is horrible. It's just so tiny. You would have thought that it would have uh, been much wider, but it really isn't. Though the inside of this trunk is pretty good. It's just the access that's just awful. Um, you should find your spare tire under here. Hopefully it has a spare tire and not a run flat. Yeah, no spare tire. That's a surprise. Just a compressor. So this car comes with run flats. Huh. Anyways, let's back out so you can look at this uh, tiny trunk over there. I love the throaty exhaust. It does have dual exhaust, by the way. And check out this back seat. The latch is in an awkward position. It would have been better towards the edge. Uh, rear legroom really won't be that great at all. No armrest. And towards the side, it's just a... As you see, a hollow hunk of plastic over here. So if both front passengers are short, um, rear passengers really won't have much of a problem. But either way, this won't be a comfortable place to be in. You can see how you're just going to be clinched tight in there. I've got to admit that I love the menacing look of this car. The front end is just beautiful. 6.2 liter overhead valve V8, 426 horsepower at 5,900 RPM, 420 foot-pounds at 4,600. So this engine packs all the punch you'd ever want. It's a very smooth running engine. Used in quite a few other GM cars. Beautiful sound. Windows closed. The engine and the exhaust. Such a beautiful combo. Well, you two, I just want to give you a closer look to this car. Unfortunately, since this is an auction setting, I can't do any test drives. Again, one of the biggest gripes I have with this car is basically its interior. That's just the biggest deal breaker for me. Now, while enthusiasts really don't care for uh, an American muscle car to have a great interior, um, there are many drivers out there who want a muscle car with badass looks, power, and demand a higher quality cabin. I think consumers do deserve that. I do prefer the Mustang for the reason that the interior is more appropriately proportioned. You just don't feel tiny in it, and that the interior has more better choices of materials throughout. Not that it's great, but it's just a hair better. Uh, one of the biggest downfalls to the Mustang is the live axle, but I've driven them and they, they ride pretty well. Um, to some enthusiasts out there, that can be a deal breaker, as the, the Camaro has a modern independent suspension and back. So the Camaro may have an edge in terms of handling. Now you can fetch yourself a 2013 Camaro of uh, this package for about 32.6, which isn't too bad considering the amount of power you're getting plus the head turning looks. Um, a personal opinion would be that you wouldn't go wrong with either. You most likely will be happy with whatever car you choose as you'll still have a powerful and attractive looking car. Yeah.